Hi, and welcome to this solution overview for Access Audio Manager Center. I will walk you through the different components and highlight some tips and tricks. Audio Manager Center will improve over time and will add more features frequently. I can assure you by the time I'm recording this video, more features and improvements will be added that I will not cover in this video. This is a centralized cloud-based audio management solution, and you can learn more about it at access.com. Let's dive in. Start by logging in. I have already created an organization to use for this demonstration. Let's familiarize ourselves with the product, starting with the top bar menu. I will start by showing you how to manage organization. By clicking here, you can rename the organization. If you ever encounter a problem and need to contact Access Support, always provide your organization ID, which you can find here. Contact information can be edited if needed, and license status is also displayed. In the top bar menu, we can see that we have multiple language support. By clicking here, you will be redirected to the user manual. You can also log out. Here is some additional information such as terms and conditions and privacy policy for the application. The dashboard will give us a nice overview of the, all the connected sites. When your system is not yet configured, the gray boxes are there to assist you. I will cover the dashboard more in detail once I have added a site. The first thing you want to do is to connect your site. In your organization, you likely have multiple sites located in different parts of the world. If so, you want to build up a tree structure that represents the geographical distribution of your sites. For instance, if you have a retail chain, each individual store would be a site where you manage your background music and advertising campaigns. You may also wish to add your distribution centers where you can manage background music and local announcements, such as health and safety reminders. Rather than having all sites in a long list, we recommend to group them by location. It will give you a better overview and you will be able to target multiple sites at once, such as all the sites in one country or a city. Add the first location and give it a name. In Europe, add a country, for example, Sweden. You can continue creating folders on as many levels as you would like. In this video, we'll stick to a country level. Adding a site requires a site name, serial number, and owner authentication key of the leader device. The leader device is the one that runs your local Access Audio Manager Edge site. To establish a connection to your Audio Manager Edge site, you only need to connect the leader to Audio Manager Center. The OAK is needed to create a secure encrypted connection to your leader device. Information on how to find your OAK is described in the user manual. As you can see, I can prepare my Audio Manager Center application with offline leaders. I can see that site status is pending. For the site to be connected, we need to configure the leader of an Audio Manager Edge site. Audio Manager Edge is a local audio management system. There are some necessary steps to take to add an Edge site to Center. Let's go through them. Start by launching Audio Manager Edge on your leader device and create your site. Follow the necessary configuration on Audio Manager Edge to fit your environment. Configuring opening hours is a must. This also includes adding the follower speakers to the site. Once that is done, you can enable cloud integration to allow your Audio Manager Edge site to connect to Audio Manager Center. Remember to add proxy settings if required by your network. Audio Manager Center and the leader device will now establish an encrypted connection. As you can see, the site is now added. If Audio Manager Center encounters any issues with the connection, it will appear under Status. You can read more about it in the user manual. You can also see the current firmware version and how many devices are connected on that site. Additionally, you can search and filter among the sites. Clicking on a site will provide you with more information about the site, such as device type and name. From here, you will be able to download the server report of the leader device for troubleshooting purposes. In the menu, you can mark a site as a favorite or open an encrypted connection to your Edge site. This will allow you to remotely access the site and perform configuration or minor troubleshooting. Let's add this site as one of our favorites. We can see that our favorite site appears here. Let's quickly add more sites. Going back to the dashboard, we can now see health monitoring about our sites. 
This view can be customized to include information most relevant to you. Site monitoring shows a general health monitoring over your site. Device monitoring shows device status if a device is online or offline. This card shows when status is pending. This card shows when there are users in the system without a role, and you can see recently opened sites. Let's configure the notifications. This helps you become aware if any issues occur on any of your sites. You will be notified once a site changes status or when a follower becomes offline. Start by adding all the relevant people you want to be notified. This is typically people who are authorized to make changes to the system. Add name, email address, and which notification they wish to get. Warning, recipients will get all the notifications. You cannot set a limitation from where a specific notification will be sent. In site notification, you can enable or disable if you want to be notified. The delay is the time the issue needs to be active before a notification will be sent. This will prevent an overflow of notifications during normal networking disturbance. Device notification provides you with information on a device level, and you have the same settings. Once we're done with the notifications, let's have a look at user management. User management provides a flexible way to give access rights on different configuration levels and locations. As an example, a regional manager can change the content and schedules within their designated region. Let's look at the different user types. An owner is predefined and has full access rights to the organization. The owner is the only user that can manage users in the organization. Admins have full configuration access to the locations and sites assigned to their user group. A content manager is a user that can only manage content on their assigned location. Like the content manager, the volume operator can only access music volumes on their assigned locations. You can add as many group constellations as you would like. Because I have assigned this location to the user group, the users will only have access to this location and the locations below it in the tree structure. Members can be added to the group later or be deleted. Add a user and assign it to the recently created group. Now we can see that the user is added to the group. A user who has accepted the invitation will have a status verified. A user can also have a pending invitation as we see here. This means that they have not yet accepted their invitation email. This is the email that you will receive when you are invited to the organization. Simply click on the link and sign in. Content can be distributed to the local site libraries. Multiple files can be distributed to multiple locations at once. Remember to check the supported file format and size. These files will be managed locally. One of the most powerful features is the scheduler. Announcements, advertisements, and music are all scheduled separately to easily prioritize between different content types. You can distribute the schedule to multiple sites at once, and it considers things like local opening hours to make sure that all sites have the same experience. Because this is distributed to the local sites, it will ensure that the schedule is playing even if the site loses connection to Audio Manager Center. Let's create a local closing announcement for all the sites in Europe. Keep in mind that sites can be stores, distribution centers, or other types of premises. To solve the challenge with different time zones, we use relative scheduling to local site opening hours. Add an event. This is a closing announcement relative to closing time that we will play 15 minutes before closing. Use the drop-down menu to select all the days that the announcement should play. Choose and upload a desired track to the schedule by clicking Upload Track. Once the event is added, you can see it in the schedule relative to closing hours. You can also preview the event for a specific site or pre-configured examples using this drop-down menu. In the Tracks tab, you will be able to see all the uploaded tracks to this schedule. You can also upload additional tracks to be used in the schedule later. From Sites, you can see the sites affected by the schedule. In the menu, you can force enable the schedule to make it active on the site. In case of failure during distribution of a schedule, you can resync the schedule. Enabling the schedule will activate and publish the schedule in all selected sites once it's saved. You can also choose not to enable and only save the schedule. This allows you to prepare an upcoming event and enable it later. This provides us with information about when the schedule was created, how many sites are affected by it, and whether it's enabled. You can edit, enable, and remove a schedule. Removing a schedule will also remove the content from the local sites. You can repeat these steps for both advertisement and music. 
In Audio Manager Edge, we can see that the schedule is distributed to the local announcement scheduler. If you have not yet selected a physical zone in your local site, please select them here. This can be used if the announcement should only be played in a specific zone in your site. You of course have the possibility to run a local schedule instead and disable the distributed schedule from Audio Manager Center. This will cause a warning in Audio Manager Center that the schedule has been disabled. Schedules in advertisements and music are distributed in the same way, but have a couple of key differences. I have already pre-prepared an advertisement schedule. Announcements are one-shot scheduled events, while advertisements are repeated at an interval. You need to upload and prepare a playlist of advertisements. Then decide how many advertisements should be played at every interval. Here you can see I have chosen to play one advertisement clip every 10 minutes starting 30 minutes after opening hours until 30 minutes before closing. The clips will be played in the order from the playlist unless you choose to shuffle, in which case the play order will be randomized. Music is managed via one schedule for the whole week, relative to opening hours. At this moment, we can only distribute web streams from sources in Audio Manager Center. If you would like to use a local source, it needs to be source tag mapped in Audio Manager Edge. In this example, you can see me using a local line in with a source tag managed by Audio Manager Center. For more information on source tags, please see the user manual. This is Audio Manager Center, a powerful tool for your centralized audio management needs. A system that assures you that the right content is being played in the right location at the right time.